The Green Hornet. He hunts the biggest of all game, public enemies that even the G-men cannot reach. The Green Hornet. Faithful valet Cato, Britt Reed, daring young publisher, matches wits with the underworld, risking his life that criminals and racketeers within the law may feel its weight by the sting of the Green Hornet. Ride with Britt Reed as he races toward another thrilling adventure. The Green Hornet strikes again. Hurry, Cato! Here's where we break an insurance racket! Just a hundred dollars to these men. While I sympathize with you, there's nothing the law can do to help you. They say they give to me good advice. Good advice on how to save the money on my insurance. They say they save them four hundred dollars a year. And for that, you agreed to pay them a hundred dollars? Yes. I have a two policy. I pay only the of my money when I'm old. I... Policy? Yes, that's it. And your second policy was a 20-year life policy? That's it. On both these policies, you pay for a certain length of time, and then you are finished. The policies are paid up, in other words. Yes, yes, but these crooks, they tell me to change the money. Your Honor, as insurance advisors, we merely showed her that she could get the same amount of protection and pay smaller premiums. Mr. Dougal, you told Mrs. Rafael that she would pay smaller premiums. Well, that's true. But you did not tell her that she would then have to continue to pay those premiums as long as she lived. Well... Your advice was to suggest that she switch from annuity and paid-up life insurance to street life. That's it, isn't it? She'd pay less. Naturally, she'd pay less, but she'd go on paying longer. Why didn't you explain that to her? Well, so few people can understand the many angles of insurance that we don't... you took advantage of that fact to work a racket. Look okay, here, you can't... Quiet. But I tell you... I said quiet. Mrs. Rivera. Yes, sir. These men set themselves up as insurance experts. Unfortunately, in this particular case, I don't think they had your best interest at heart. That isn't true, Your Honor. Did you tell Mrs. Rivera that advice is given by the insurance company, given free to anyone who asks for it? No, that wasn't my responsibility. If she chose to come to us for advice, that's what we're for. She agreed to pay us, now she won't. I demand that she pay. Uh, You're all so flesh, eh? We're entitled to the money. If the laws of this state gave me any leeway, Mr. Dougal, I'd make it more difficult for you to collect. You gave Mrs. Rivera advice that she could have gotten for nothing. And not very good advice. If I could get it free, then why have to pay them? Because these men have taken advantage of the law as well as you, Mrs. Rivera. They charge for advice. If you go to them for advice, the law can't stop that. A hundred dollars. I'm a poor woman. I thought it would help me. It's people like you. Poor people who are looking desperately for a way to save money. They're the ones who most often fall victim, Mr. Racketeers. Oh, it wouldn't take me so long to pay. Money I need for the house, for the children. They said it would help me to save the money. And now I... <laughs> it is the hope of this court that someday men who make a racket out of insurance advising... I'll weed it out from those who do so wonderfully. That the state insurance commission will have the power. At some time, the state insurance commission is going to have laws passed to get power over them racketeers. And the dirt. Well, I said all that, Ashford. Golly, that ain't half of it. 
He needed you them insurance racketeers with four fists. Was this Cook Dougal there? Sure, him and his partner Webster, and a lawyer. <laughs> they must have burned up when the judge laced into them. Not the rats, Casey. You mean they were cool? Like a cucumber. Something snakes ain't it awful how crooks can have the law working for them that way. What about poor Mrs. Rivera? Uh, she's got to pay. He didn't help her, actually. Gosh, there are lots of insurance counselors who are honest and really entitled to being paid for advice. Not to mention you can get advice from your insurance company for nothing, Casey. But to make that poor woman pay in a case like this... I was telling me about it last night, Casey. And the poor dame can't hardly afford to waste 50 cents, let alone 100 bucks. That's a shame. I demand to see the man who's responsible for this. Just a moment. Who are you? The territorial and daily sentinel. The deliberate slap in the face. You'll tell me who you are and what Come you want to You're Dougal. That happens to be my name. I seen you in court yesterday. Why, you chiseling cook, I ought oh, to Oh, Axford. I learned you to jip poor dame like that. Cut it out. Who's responsible for this, this thing? If you're talking about the editorial, it's just what you cooks need. I'll see about that. It's the Dougal. I don't know who wrote that editorial, but... Oh, uh, playing dumb, eh? Huh? But I was saying, whoever wrote it, the orders came from the publisher, Mr. Reed. And I suppose he's out of town and can't be reached. He's right here, and I hope he'll see you. Yes, Mr. Case. There's a Mr. Dougal out here, Mr. Reed. Dougal? You sure it's advising? If you want to call him that, he's sizzling. Yes, sir. Uh, send him in. We'll see if we can't throw him off. Yes, sir. Well? There's a door, mister. You walk through and you're face to face with Mr. Reed. Good. Better keep your guard up. That kid of yours looks awfully weak. He's got a glass jar, Casey. Uh, well, you wanted to see me? Come in. I certainly will. Which of you two is responsible for this editorial? I put it in the sentinel, Dougal. What about it? Never mind, Gunnigan. Your name's Dougal, isn't it? It is. And you can complain to me. As publisher, I had that editorial written. Just what do you mean by advising the public to steer clear of certain insurance advice? Exactly what the article says, Mr. Dougal. I gather you can read. I'm an insurance advisor. Well, the man's bragging about it, Reed. Had a little case in court yesterday, didn't you? We were entirely within the law. Mrs. Revere owed us that money. For what? For our advice. For which you charged her a hundred dollars. That's our fee. I'm in an honest business. Stop right right there. The Sentinel doesn't make war on honest businessmen, do you? Then how about this editorial? That editorial specifically states that most insurance advisors are honest, with a few exceptions. And you call me one? We mention no names. We didn't have to. If the shoe fits, Dougal, wear it. My business is offering advice to those in need. And the Sentinel's business is reflecting public opinion. What you've done now is... Stop right now, listen to me. No, just for a change, you listen to me. You offer advice and charge a fee, is that right? Yes. Well, the Daily Sentinel offers advice, too. Only our fee is no more than three cents. The price of the newspaper. You mean by that? your own conclusion. We let our readers do the same. But you can't That's what I run this paper, not you. If I believe that certain insurance advisors are all they should be, I can use the pages of the Daily Sentinel to warn the public. And that's exactly what I'm doing. Now, is there anything else? Well, uh... Well, it is. Uh, looks like you're around, Reed. Now, we're rather busy, Tuggle. If you don't mind... Yes, Miss Case. There's a phone call here, Mr. Reed. It's for Mr. Dougal. Phone call? Put it on. Dougal, one moment. What is it now? This phone call is for you. For me? I'm not expecting it. Do you want it? It must be my office. Yes, yes, I'll take it. Hello? Mr. Dougal. Who is it? Miss Liggett. Anything wrong with the office? We, uh, I just heard something. It's about the... Well, well, what is it? What are you frightened about? It's uh, Mr. Dougal. It's the Green Hornet. The Green Hornet? Yes, he is. The Hornet? Uh, so I'll call the police. Oh, please, no, no, no. Don't do anything. I'll be right over Dougal, did you mention the Green Hornet? Why, uh, no, no, it's nothing. Wait a minute. What about the Hornet? I don't know what you're talking about. From my office, I got to go over there immediately. What's the matter that guy, Reed? He turned rather pale, didn't he, Gunnigan? Did he mention the Hornet, or am I hearing things? We both heard it, Gunnigan. Yes, Mr. Reed. Is Mr. Dougal gone, Miss Case? Gone? He went out of here on a tailwind. <laughs> Call the city room. Get Lowry in here. Lowry? On the double. He's got an assignment. The phone call gave us a lead, Gunnigan. The Sentinel's going to use it. And how, Reed? Want me to get Larry on the trail, eh? Dougal mentioned the Green Hornet. He covered it up all the fast. And the saddle's going to uncover it. Yeah, we could... Hey, Reed, for Pete's sake, do you? You suppose the Green Hornet may have something to do with the racket? Hey, boss, Casey says it's a free alarm. You got an assignment, Larry? Right, Larry. Dougal, the insurance counsel, just left here. He knows something about the Green Hornet. Now get after it. He's heading back to his office. <laughs> Where is it? I gave it to Mr. Webster. He didn't find anything. I know where he is, you fool. Webster. Yes, I'm afraid of hurry. The police department. Webster, put down that phone. Oh, hello, sir. Relax. 
Hey, what's the big idea? They were calling the police. Sure, we can't take any chances. Didn't we to tell you my orders? I said not to call the police. Yes, she told me, but then I... Call the police and what happened? Huh? Publicity, more publicity. We've already had enough of that in the Daily Sun. Don't just... We don't want any more glaring lights turned on us. So many people we've hoped. So what? We're within the law. We are, yes. We don't want bad publicity. Tell the police and they'll swarm down here. Ask our business. Reporters will flock here. Yeah, there's something in what you say. I had an idea you might try a dumb stuff like this. That's why I hurried. Now, where's the letter from the Hornet? It wasn't from the Hornet. But you it's said... It's about the Hornet, yes. Here, look at it. Yeah. I'm sorry. It's typewritten, too. Why, why, this note says that one of our clients is the Green Hornet. Yeah, it could be any one of a hundred people. This note must be from someone who knows the Hornet's identity. That's what I figured. But why should the Green Hornet be interested in what we're doing? I wish I knew. Maybe that's a crank letter, Dougal. If it were signed by the Green Hornet... It... If it were a demand for money, it, it might be false, you know, a crude attempt at a shakedown, but... Well, this letter's apparently doing us a favor. I hadn't thought of that. It must be from someone who hates the Hornets. Well, that takes in everybody. They say him like the plague. Yeah. If you want to learn the real identity of the Green Hornet, he's one of the suckers on your list. Do you think it might be that man Black, the one we had in yesterday? He said he was looking for advice on insurance, but he looked kind of tough. Ah, uh, I... too dumb. Say, hey, Dougal. If we could locate the Green Hornet, we'd get that reward. Never mind the reward. Huh? You fool, that reward is chicken feed. I don't get it. Webster, how much would the Hornet pay us not to tell the police? I don't... Hey, that's an idea. We could collect plenty. Yeah, if we learn who he is. We have a lead already. All we need is to... Mr. Dougal. Well? I'm the man outside. He's a reporter from the Sentinel. He wants to talk about the Hornet. We're not talking. Send him away. Oh, wait. A reporter, huh? Maybe he can give us some information without knowing it. I'll talk to him first. Then we'll send him away. Yeah, boss. Hi, Thorne. They said they didn't know a thing about the Green Hornets. Go to Dougal, Larry? Him and his partner, Webster. Claimed they never had a thing about the Green Hornets. But they asked an awful lot of questions. Let's see. About the Hornets? Whether I'd ever seen him, how big he was, what sort of build he you, had. You uh, told him? Sure, I've seen the Hornet. Came close to him a couple of times. Yeah, but never close enough. My boss, did it make any difference? Uh, no, Lowry. You satisfied their curiosity. That's okay. And, boss, were they curious? You know those poor staff thought they were dragging the answers out of me? They weren't subtle? They tried to be. Can you imagine those mugs trying to be casual about digging for information with a reporter who's an expert at digging? <laughs> okay, Lowry, that's all. <laughs> right, boss. See you in the papers. Uh-huh. I'll keep after him. Yeah, there's no doubt Lowry will keep after him. And so over Green Hornet. <laughs> Department one evening, Britt cornered Michael Axford, his bungling bodyguard, as he was about to leave. Now, wait a minute, Axford. You hardly finished your coffee. I got a step on the feet, but only two cups, Axford. Cato feels slighted. Golly, your feelings ain't hurt, Cato. No, Mr. Sir. Oh. It's only on account of enjoying some investigating on the green harness lead. And being a man of action, I don't sit around when I could be out floating. It's about the insurance advisors? Yeah, them crooks, Dougal and Webster. They keep denying it. But me and Lowry got a theory that they're mixed up with the Hornet somewhere along the line. Yeah, Dougal mentioned the Green Hornet in my office. Yeah, but he's been denying it ever since, Reed. You believe him? Oh, not me. That's why I'm going out. I figured if we can't watch Dougal long enough, we're going to learn something. About the Hornet? Holy cow, what else? Have you uh, had any luck so far, actually? Oh, me and Lowry been watching him like hawks. Them guys is acting awful suspicious, Reed. Yeah, well, I heard they pumped Lowry all they could. That ain't all. No? They've been going around calling on a lot of people, Reed. Yeah, Lowry mentioned that. You, uh, checked up on these people? 
Every one of them was guys that had been going to Dougal and Webster for insurance advice. Could they explain the call? Nope. Just that the two of them asked a lot of phony questions. Indirect questions, actually? Yeah, that's it. Like they were trying to get information without letting on. The same way they asked Lowry about the appearance of the Green Hornet. Yeah, and... Holy crow. What is I just took us something. Reed, do you suppose one of them guys might be the Hornet? Dougal or Webster? No. One of the guys is asking the questions from Golly, now that I recollect, there was one fellow who might be the Hornet. So? Yeah, a guy named Lund. Lund? Yeah. I got his address wrote down here in my little book. I'm keeping a list whenever we talk to somebody what we're speaking to Dougal and Webster. Well, let's see that book, actually. Well. Lund. Well, what makes you regard him as a possibility? Me police trainer, that's why. He looks like a hornet? Well, I ain't never seen the hornet's face on account of that mask the hornet wears. But this guy's about the same size. Oh, there's plenty of times I've been as close to the green hornet as you and me right now, Reed. Uh-huh. But that's no indication, actually. After all, you've often said that my build was similar to the green hornet. But this guy, Lund, Reed. Uh, wait, let me see that book. Another clue? Yep, just like I thought. Dougal and Webster went to see Lund twice. Twice, Reed. Don't that prove they got their eye on him? So you think one may be the hornet? I got me theories, Reed. I leave you now when I find out. I'll be waiting. How do you read? Did I ever say your bill was like the green hornet? Oh, many times. But I must have been dreaming. The more I look at you, the more I can tell it must be this guy, Lund. It's so right, you. <coughs> so the man's name is Lund. And they've seen him twice. Cato. Yes, Mr. Bates. That note we sent Dougal is bringing results. I heard, Miss Oxford. Dougal's working a racket in insurance advising Cato. It's entirely within the law. So legal that nothing can be done to break it up. Uh, nothing legal. Very true. But once a crook, always a crook, Cato. By sending that note, we arouse the instinctive greed in those men. They're trying their best to discover if this man Lund is the Green Hornet so they can blackmail him. I see. Got the Green Hornet mask and the gas weapon, Cato. I'll meet you in the hiding place of the Black Beauty. You make phone call? Go ahead. I'll be right with you. Very well. Hello? I want to talk to Dougal. This is Dougal. What do you want? You got a note from me a week ago. Who is this? A note about the Green Hornet. The... Oh, yes, yes. I got another tip for you. You've got your eye on one man, haven't you? Well, I... I'd rather not say. You don't have to. But if you want to make sure, go to 1674 East 10th Street tonight. 1674? East 10th in an hour. But I don't... If you line anything up, we split. Understand? Who is this? One hour. Now to join Cato and the Black Beauty. <laughs> Behind a secret panel in Vic Reed's clothes press, a narrow passage led within the wall of the apartment house and directly into an adjoining building. Supposedly abandoned, this building was in reality the hiding place of the super-powered, streamlined car of the Green Hornet. Everything set, Tato? The black video okay? Hydrating, Mr. Bates. Take the wheel. We have an hour to get to 1674 East 10th Street. I'll explain what you're to do on the way. Who did there, Mr. Bates? I got the address when I glanced at Axford's book. A man named Lund. The man Dougal thinks is the Green Hornet. How long have we been waiting, Dougal? Not an hour yet. But you don't even know who called you or why. He referred to the note, didn't he? Nobody knows about that note but us and the man who sent it. Who is he? He didn't mention his name. We'll hear from him later. He'll want a slice of the dough himself. Then Lund is a hornet like we suspected. It looks more and more that way. This is his address we were told to come to. Lund fits what little description there is concerning the but hornet. But Dougal, don't... Sure, you shut up. Are you sure this is the right track? After all, we had a lot of people to choose from. In any group that size, we'd find someone to match that description. That's why we're going slowly. We'll make absolutely certain Lund is the hornet before we ask him for money. How much? Well, we should get at least... Hey, uh, listen. I hear it. Coming right past us. This car, the horse car. Look, he's stopping. Getting out. Right in front of Lund's rooming house. He went inside. Wait here. You're, you're going after him? Yep. His car's gone. He'll be alone. If I don't come out of 15 minutes, call the police. Tell them Lund is the Green Hornet. <laughs> What are you doing here, Mr. Dougal? I... A little cold, Lund. You don't mind if I keep this gun pointed at you? Get out of here. What are you hiding? Me? Why? Move away from that table and keep your hands up. No, wait. Oh, I told you. 
Ten minutes and my friend calls the police. But you're making a mistake. I'm not the green hornet. I thought so. A mask and a bunch of stickers. They're not mine. Never mind that. You're the green hornet. We got a letter. We were parked right outside. I saw you get out of your car and come in here. What makes you think... Now listen, hornet. Go on denying it all you like. But I'm telling you this. Pay me 50,000 bucks or I'll tell the police you're the green hornet. My name is Lund. Okay, Lund. That's all I had to say. Think it over. But I... I tell you... Fifty thousand. Call me when you get it. And don't try to get rid of me either. I have a paper in a safe place, a very safe place. If something happens to me and Webster, the police will know where to go. He, he's gone. You, he can come out now. What's the matter, Lund? You look pale. What does this mean? You come in here wearing a mask and a gun. You, you get by me. You were told what to say and you started. That's enough. He, he thinks I'm the one at fifty thousand dollars. Buying a little blackmail. I don't get this. I got nothing to do with you. You don't care for Doodle. Went to him for insurance advice. He jipped me. And he comes in here. You want him to tell you to keep quiet? Well, do I... as you're told. Listen. You don't have to point it out. Keep your mouth shut. Doodle's after the horn, if not you. He won't be harmed, I promise you. Just forget everything that happened, you'll be all right. Who's there? It's all right, Kato. Yes, all right. It's all set, Kato. Doodle's going to get a phone call in a few days. A call telling him the Green Hornet is agreeing to pay that blackmail money. <laughs> Thousand. I haven't been able to call you before, but it's all right. I knew you'd be sensible, Hornet. Don't use that word on the phone. Oh, yes. Very well. When shall I get it, Mr. Lund? Well, come around tonight. I'll, I'll be expecting you. There, Kato. Dougal thought it was Lund calling. Your handkerchief over the mouthpiece. Muffle my voice well enough. Yes, sir. Tonight. Lowry and Axford are still at headquarters? I think so. Yeah. Keep your fingers crossed on one angle, Kato. If Lund keeps silent, we'll smash these racketeers. But if Lund talks... Well, we'll have to play the cards as they fall. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am, this is the police department. Sergeant Moran talking. Okay. Anything hot, Moran? Just her temper, Lowry. Routine, pal. She's forgotten her house key. <laughs> <laughs> the cop on the beat will probably find it in her handbag. Well, like I was saying, Lowry, I've been over talking to that guy, Lund. And he's acting awful funny. You still think that guy's the green harlot? I've been figuring it out. He's the right side. Listen, and... Lug, that guy, Lund, is poor. He hasn't got a cent. Well, suffering snakes. Maybe he's got the dough sorted away in safety deposit. Yeah, or a gold mine. He could be, Lowry. Nobody knows who the harlot is. One guess is as good as another. Okay, okay. How about ducking out for a cup of jam, Axford? Can sort of late, I... Sergeant Moran, police department. What's the... What? Green Hornet. Run? Hey, hey, say that again. Hello. What's up? The Green Hornet. Hey, get a squad car ready. Holy cow, is it Lund Moran? No, no. All the guys said was get over to Lund's room and house to the Green Hornet. Then he slammed the hook on. Hello, Danny Sutton. Give me the desk. Golly, I told you. Who was the car, Moran? I don't know who called, but I'm going to find out. Hello, hello, Gunnigan. Come on, Lowry, we got to move. Keep it real right, man. Danny Gunnigan. It's a big story. The police just got a tip. We're on our way. It's the Green Hornet. Yes, I'm inside Lund. You? Matt, the Hornet is in a... Dougal's on his way here. He expects 50000 But I didn't call him. No, I called him. I haven't got any money. Tell him that. He, he said he'd tell the police I'm the Green Hornet. Well, you're not the Hornet, so why worry? I'm poor. I can't prove it. They'll take me, put me in jail. Dougal's right. collar crooks, racketeers. They're going to be smashed now. Hey, open up. Come on, Lund. We know you're there. Wait, I made it fast. Lund, tell him just a moment. I, I'm coming. Just a second. Come here, close to the window. Hurry. No. Don't shoot me. I'll be up this fire escape. You let the police in, but don't say a word about the Hornet being here. Do you understand? Yeah, we'll pull the trigger, will you? will be safe, absolutely safe. If you follow those instructions, what's more, Dougal and Welch, you'll be punished. All right. Have no choice. Go ahead. Answer that door. Okay, run the carrot. I knew the green Hornet. No, I... We'd better start looking the place over, Moran. Maybe he's got the stuff hit away. Hey, here's the closet. Hey, quiet. Huh? Yeah. Somebody coming up the steps. Who is it, Lund? Dougal. Dougal and Webster. They're trying to blackmail me. Blackmail, huh? Moran, thanks for... Come on, duck in the closet. Golly, you're right, Lowry. We find out what they're trying to blackmail Lund about, huh? You look awfully scared, Lund, for a guy that's supposed... Inside, they're here. Now, let them in. We'll leave this closet door open a crack. 
Come in. All right, Webster, keep an eye on him. Where's the 50,000 in London? Uh, you're making a mistake. I'm not the Green Hornet. Come on, come on. You called up. You said you'd have the dough. No, no, I didn't. Look, I'm tired of you stolen. We know you're the Green Hornet. Now pay up. We could tell the cops. We want the dough instead. You pay or we will tell the cops. You're, you're blackmailing the wrong guy. I'm not the Hornet and I can prove it. Look, huh? Okay, you ask for it. When the police learn about it. The police know already, don't you? Oh, Keep your hands off that gun. I got him. Give me that. Get him, get him. He's the green holder. Don't shoot I, I give up. We'll watch it alone, Dougal. And you two laugh at one of the black men. Oh, you can't. Who do... says we can? We heard you try to squeeze money out of him. He'll do a stretch for that and a long stretch. They're making a mistake. I'm not the hornet. I, I can't talk. There's a gun pointed at him. Gun? Nobody's got a gun. No, 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 no. Well, what of it? The hornet uses a gas gun. You ought to know that. Uh, a gas gun? You mean it's just gas? Why, sure. Can't hurt a fly. So that's it. There's the Hornet there. Huh? I'm the fire escape. Come on, we'll get that crook. Well, there's nobody here. Dougal, you fool, it's a trap. This man isn't the Hornet. Holy mackerel, look. There he goes. That's the Hornet's car. There, I told you. There's proof I'm not the Hornet. There, we can see that, Lord. But you can't hold us. No, oh, you'll help her plenty. This guy isn't the Hornet, but you tried blackmail. And the charge is going to stick. Well, you Let me go. That green Hornet, he did this. If I ever see him, I'll... I'm down, you rat. The only thing you'll go to see is bars. Your racket's all washed up. <laughs> For blackmail. And now we can blast their insurance racket to bits. Spread it all over page one, Gunnigan. We're doing more than that, Reed. I took your suggestion. Lowry's doing a series of articles about those rats, telling the inside story of their insurance racket. That's great. When the public starts reading, that racket will be wiped off the slate. Get the sentinel out on the streets. Mm-hmm. 